What is resolution and what is frame rate and how do they work together? Let's start with resolution first. Basically resolution is a fancy word for your video file size. The two most common settings that you'll be cycling through on modern day cameras are 4K and 1080p. Out of the two options, 4K is a larger one and is going to give you a little bit more flexibility in things like color and cropping because it has more information and is a larger file size. If your camera has 4K, I recommend using it, especially if you think your computer will be able to handle it. That said, nowadays even smartphones have 4K. But don't worry if you don't have 4K on your camera. 1080p is still a very good option. So if you're using a DSLR or mirrorless camera or even a smartphone, dive into your settings and see what resolution options you have available. The first thing that you'll notice is that you probably have a couple of different options for each of your resolutions. For example, you wouldn't just choose 1080p. You'll probably see a couple of options like 1080p 24fps or 1080p 30fps or even 1080p 60fps. These additional numbers next to your resolution represent your frame rate. And frame rate, or frames per second, is how many individual frames there are in a single second of video footage. Now why does all this matter? Well, it's really going to change the pace and flow of your video footage, as well as changing how your footage will react. For example, 24fps is the cinematic standard for video footage. 30fps a lot of times is going to be used in things like news broadcasts and soap operas. For YouTubers, and content creators, 60 FPS is very frequently used to slow things down. And anything higher than 60, like 120 or 240 FPS, is used for slow motion as well. When creating any video, at some point in the beginning, you have to create your project file, and the first settings that you're going to choose are your resolution and your frame rate. I would recommend choosing a 24 FPS timeline because it's going to give you a very cinematic look. So if we're working with a 24 FPS timeline, when we bring in footage that was shot in 24 FPS, then it's going to look very natural and play out at a normal speed. However, if we bring in footage that was shot in something like 60 FPS onto our 24 FPS timeline, we can technically convert the footage to 24 FPS by reducing its speed down to 40%. On the screen now is the simple equation you can use whenever you need to determine the percentage on your own. And what you'll see is that the 60 FPS footage has now been stretched out and slowed down. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of frame rates and how to select them properly. I would just recommend basing everything off of 24 FPS so that when you shoot 24 FPS, you know it's normal speed. And when you shoot something like 60 FPS, you know it's going to be slowed down. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing, guys. I really hope you found the information in this video valuable. For a much deeper dive into frame rates in the world of videography, I suggest hopping over to this video next, where I explain eight tips and tricks for the aspiring videographer. I'll see you there.